I am not a mechanic. Well, I don't even play one on YouTube. But I sure do like to tinker with this old iron. Quite often we'll drag one of these old rigs home and sometimes I can even make them run. And if I can get one of them to run, well I might turn it into something that looks like this. Or maybe I'll turn it into something that looks like this. You just never know. So, although I'm not a mechanic, and I probably know just enough to be dangerous, I really have a lot of fun playing around with these old rigs, and I hope you enjoy seeing some of the old cars and trucks that find their way into my world from time to time. Thanks for watching these videos, and I appreciate you. I wonder if there's something that caused that coil to go bad, or if it was just a quink -a dink because I was debating uh, whether it was an, an electrical problem or a fuel problem, and uh, it was both, apparently. But I don't know if something caused that uh, coil to go bad, if it's gonna happen again. I hope not. Oh, there's my little 327. Man, this thing just loves to run. Really like this little car. I like uh, that, that the brakes suck. I like that it dips in the corners when <laughs> you're going fast in a corner and, and the suspension is horrible and the steering's bad and the brakes are weird you just barely touch them and they'll put you through the windshield and i just love all of it because it's what i grew up with i had one of these when i was a senior in high school but it wasn't this nice it was an old beater somebody had had a 409 it was a 409 car and somebody had just ran the daylights out of it and then they pulled the 409 and kept it 
I dumped a little uh, three or 283 in it and I bought it for 700 bucks. I think that's what I paid for it. So it was a, let's see, yeah, that would have been about 1969. It was six years old and I got it for 700 bucks. Okay, so far so good. Turn this off and what she does okay let's back up here a little bit and the reason we're here is because of this the other day when Victor and I took this thing out and got it all cleaned up fired it up it, it started right up it, it sat there all winter but it always starts up it's no surprise that little 327 is one of the best engines they ever made or it was for the time you know not anymore but for the time, the 327 and 283 was just a beautiful, beautiful engine. Uh, but when we cleaned it up and took it to town and didn't have any problems, and then the next day, I think it was, we took it over to my son's house, started back home and almost didn't make it home. What it did was it just wouldn't rev up. It was running real low RPM and would not rev up. And uh, we crippled it home and I thought it was electrical and Victor thought it was fuel. The reason I thought that, that coil was really hot to the touch, man. I think I haven't checked the fuel pump yet. I wanted to see if it run. I'm gonna take it for a little test drive, I guess. See what it does when it gets warmed up. get very far and it's doing the same thing. Got it all the way to the floor and it just won't grab up. He's out of it. That's all she'll do. I hope I make it to the house. I think it's starving for fuel. Why did it start and rev up and run so well? And there it tried, it tried to rev again. So I'm still not sure about the fuel thing. Let's see if it had points. I could deal with that. I'm an old points condenser kind of guy, you know. There, see it took off, tried to run. See the old school guy would say the points are closing. That's what it acts like. But it ain't got no points. Okay, runs fine in park, neutral. As long as it doesn't have a load on it, it's just dandy. So what is it? There's somebody out there going, oh, that's an easy one, man. You don't know exactly what's wrong. The thing is, you got to be careful about asking for advice on YouTube. Because there's lots of, uh, lots of keyboard mechanics out there that'll tell you exactly what's wrong, even though they've never, never picked up a wrench. They'll tell you how to fix it. So you got to be careful about that. There's some guys out there, though, that know their stuff. Uh, Chevaholic, man, he's a good mechanic. He knows what he's doing. Mr. Heavy Chevy, he knows what he's doing. I love how he's teaching that little boy. Man, that little boy is going to be, in a couple years, he's going to be a better mechanic than most of us are already. Um, one Lonely Farmer and his son, man, them guys are fearless. You know, they'll dive into one of them great big tractors and break it in half and bury down in there and get to the bottom and drag something out and put something else in and put it all back together again and 
they're just fearless, you know. Uh, I remember my dad and one of his friends breaking apart a tractor and putting a clutch in it, but <laughs> it was a little old Ford 9N. <laughs> you know, that's, that's hardly different than a truck, you know, pickup. But uh, them guys, they dive into the big rigs and have no fear. Um, who's another one? There's lots of them out there. Um, Jeff Bradshaw, he knows his stuff. Um, I trust him. But uh, like I said, you got to be careful because <laughs> some of them uh, will give you advice whether they know anything or not. All right, I'm going to tinker around with this thing a little bit, see what I can find out. I'll be back. Well, what I've done is just connected the mechanical fuel pump. Pulled the uh, intake hose off of the mechanical pump, plugged off the fuel line coming from the tank, and temporarily mounted a little electric fuel pump. And uh, here's my auxiliary temporary tank and my little on and off switch for the fuel pump here. Let's see what it does. It's idling fine. Of course it did before. Parking neutral it was fine. It just didn't have any get up and go about it. As soon as you put it in gear, I went down the driveway. It didn't get far from the driveway and started doing the same thing. Nope, it's still doing it. Doesn't want to run. Does not want to run in gear. Doesn't want to rev up. So I guess we're going to rule, rule out the fuel issue. Apparently the fuel pump's okay. Here comes trouble. Well, I didn't really get to test it out. I kind of fouled up my my operation when I met Jack down there on the road and I uh, shut it off and then it didn't want to start. I couldn't really tell. I was going to take it down to the bottom of the hill and come back and see what it did, but I turned it off and then it didn't want to start. I ran the battery down. So he had to bring me up to get my jump box and started it up and then coming back up the driveway it seemed to be doing okay but I couldn't really tell I had to take it easy I had this jump box sitting up here and the hood open a little bit and so uh, I still don't really know but it seemed to be doing okay coming up the road um, I don't know it's got good good spark good ignition uh, and it's got plenty of fuel and I'm starting to wonder about that torque converter. So we'll just have to charge it up and see. See if I can learn a little bit more. Well, there's still something wrong. It just uh, idles down real low and it dies. If I don't keep it revved up. Victor is in Zacatecas, but we talk several times each week via a free video conferencing program called WhatsApp. It's a great little program. Well, he asked me about the car, so I just happened to be sending him a video message when... This is a new fuel pump, and um, I took this line off here, this hose. This line goes back to the gas tank. I took this off, and I put some air, and blew back through that hose to make sure there's nothing in the line, and it's clean, it's clear. Be that. My coil just blew up. It's burning up. 
What the world? Now, my old pappy taught me when I was just a young lad that you don't leave the ignition on because if the points are closed, it'll burn them up. And I've had that happen. I know it'll burn the points up. But if you remember at the beginning of this video, I talked about the coil being really hot that night we got home when we barely made it home. So did the ignition being turned on burn the coil up? I don't think so. I think it was a bad coil to start with. There's a hole in the end of that little bolt. It blew oil out through that hole. I've seen them blow up down here before, blow a seal blow apart, but I've never seen that happen. Okay, that just happened. Hmm. Well, what I was about to tell you, Victor, when my coil blew up, was that I was going to try a different fuel pump. I'm going to try this one. Maybe it's less pressure. This one has too much pressure. Sometimes it pays to be a hoarder. Okay, install my spare hoarded blaster tube coil. Installed an electric fuel pump. I had one on it before. It was just too much. Too much pressure. This one. Too much pressure. And it was overloading the carburetor forcing gas in. This one seems to be about right. And I've rigged a little switch here for it. And I've got my remote starter. And it sounds like a 327 now. I think what I did was replace a bad fuel pump with a bad fuel pump. I said new fuel pump, but what I meant by that was a different fuel pump, not new as from the store. So uh, I think I had a bad fuel pump, and I think I put another one on that was not doing the job, but this electric one seems to. So I'd still kind of like to have the mechanic, mechanical fuel pump on it. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. I may go ahead and mount this thing back by the tank and uh, just go ahead and run an electric. All right, I'm gonna go for a little test drive because I had it run before when it would rev in park or neutral, but it, you put it in gear and it wouldn't rev up. It's bogged down. Matter of fact, it left me stranded on my driveway last night and I had to walk up the hill. So we still have to do a test drive but uh, fingers crossed. That's more like it. Boom, power glide. I got some power in my glide. steering wheel 19 times corner to corner oh yeah that's what it's supposed to feel like
put a timing light on it, and uh, we'll call it good.